Hi guys. Um, today we are going to do lesson two two. Angle relationships. Two angles that have a sum of 90. Two angles that have a sum of 90 are complementary angles. Complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90. Do you guys remember what two angles that add up to 180 are called? That is supplementary. So um, if they tell us the two angles are complementary, we know that that means they are going to equal 90 degrees together. They don't have to necessarily be right together like this. They could be apart. Those are still complementary angles if they sum up to 90 degrees. These add up to 180 right next to each other or apart, they equal 180 degrees. Okay, two angles, two angles that add to be that. So here we have some complementary angles and some supplementary angles. We're supposed to solve for x. All right. Sorry about that. I got a phone call. Okay. So we were getting ready to solve these. If this is 90 right here, those are complementary. To find x, we do 90 minus 37. That would give me 53 for x. Or this one. Those make us straight lines. That'd be 180 degrees. So 2x plus 3 plus x minus 6 is going to equal 180. Put those like terms together. That'd be 3x minus 3 equals 180. Add that 3 over. 3x equals 183. And then divide by 3. So x equals 61. Pause if you need to and move on. Okay, some problems with complementary and supplementary angles. It says find the measures of the complementary angles if the measure of the larger angle is five more than four times the measure of the smaller angle. All right, so when they give us these questions, we're going to let the smaller angle equal x. x is a smaller angle. The bigger angle, then, it says is four times more than is five more than four times the measure. So that's where this came from. They have four times the measure plus five. Together, that small angle x plus that four x plus five, it says that they are complementary. So that tells us that equals 90 degrees. Put together those like terms, that's 5x plus 5 equals 90. Subtract 5, that gives me 5x equals 85, and then divide by 5. So x would be 17. It doesn't want x. It wants the measure of the angles. We got to take that 17. That'd be the smaller angle. The small angle is 17 degrees. And the complementary angle then would be found 17, 90 minus 17. 73 degrees. Let's try another one. The difference between the measures of two supplementary angles is 18 degrees. The difference between the measures of them. So if the measure of the small, smaller angle is x, and the measure of the larger angle is x minus 18. The difference between them is 18. Well, larger angle would be x. 
plus 18. It's 18. Bigger than a smaller angle. What would that equal up to? So we'd have x plus x plus 18 is equal to 180 because it's supplementary. That'd be 2x plus 18. Put those like terms together equals 180. Subtract 18. 2x would equal 162. Divide by 2x would be 81. So 81 degrees. be the smaller angle and x plus 18 81 plus 18 will give me 99 degrees and that would have a difference of I mean a sum of 180 so I just took that 81 for x plugged it in right here so 81 plus 18 was 99. Okay, I did it in my head. All right. Perpendicularity. What a word. Perpendicularity. Line segments or rays that intersect at right angles are called perpendicular. Segment or rays can be per perpendicular to lines or other line segments and rays. The angle symbol indicates the lines are perpendicular. So they put the little square in the box. That shows that they are perpendicular. Uh, if you have two lines, they will intersect. They will make four 90 degree angles. This will be 90. This will be 90. This will also be 90. Okay. They're all 90 degrees. So we can use that. It says the tan gram is a puzzle consisting of seven flat shapes called tans which are put together to form shapes. Find the values of X and Y such that AD and EC in the tangram are perpendicular. If they're perpendicular, we know that these angles here equal 90. So E, F, I'm sorry, E, B, D, right there, that makes a 90 degree angle. So if you add those together, that's 7X plus 10 plus the 8X plus five, those together equal 90. So we solve that, put those like terms together. Now, when you're out crossing that line, don't do the inverse. That'd be 15x plus 15 equals 90. Subtract 15 over. So 15x would equal 675. And then divide by 15. So x would equal 6, no, x would be 5, and that's x, and then we need to find y. Y, the whole angle there is equal to 90. So we'd have 3Y plus 15 equals 90. Subtract 15. That'd be 3Y equals 75 and divide by 3. So Y would equal 25. Next question says to find the values of X and Y such that PR and QS are perpendicular. Again, so we've got some 90 degree angles. Um, same idea for finding X. We've got those two angles there, both adding up to 90. So 5X plus 6 plus that 2X is going to equal 90. Put those together. That's 7X plus 6 equals 90. Subtract 6, 7x would equal 84. Divide by 7, x would equal 12. That's one answer. 
And it also says to find y. y is the whole angle, B, P, Q, S. So you're going to do 4y minus 2 equals 90. Add 2, that gives me 4y equals 92. Divide by 4, y would equal 23. And the last part of the lesson is going to put everything together that we have learned. We have to make sure that we don't assume too much. What you can assume is points and lines shown here are coplanar. You can assume that they're on the same plane. You can assume that the, if they look collinear, they are. You can assume the H is between G, J. You can assume um, that they're adjacent if they look like they're next to each other. You can assume that they form a straight line if they look like they make a straight line. And then you can assume that they're supplementary if it looks if it makes a straight line together. Lines that appear perpendicular may not necessarily be. They might be off by just a degree. Okay, Angles that appear congruent may not be exactly congruent. You can't just assume that. Segments that appear congruent may not be congruent. You can't just assume length. You could be off by 0 0.01 or something like that. Okay, so we're going to talk about what we can assume and what we cannot. We're going to put a Y next one we can assume and an N next one we can't. We're going to explain it together. It says CE and CF are opposite rays. CE and CF. Yeah, that's opposite rays. Yes. BGC. BGC is here. KGC is here. Yes, we can assume those form a linear pair together. ABJ, ABJ is here. Can we assume that that is vertical to CBG? CBG. Yeah, because they're sides. The sides here, they continue on. They make an X shape. Yes, you can assume those are vertical angles. Can we assume the angle BCG? BCG, that's this angle right here. Can we assume that that is congruent to DCF? DCF. They look congruent, but we cannot assume that because they're not vertical angles. This would be vertical angles would be over here, not here. That This is not straight line. So that one we cannot assume, no. Can we assume that BE and IF are perpendicular? BE is here, IF is here. It looks pretty perpendicular, but no, you can't assume that that line might just be barely, just slightly off, so no. Can we assume that angle EBC, EBC is uh, complementary to GBC? GBC and EBC, EBC. No, we don't have any information about this being perpendicular or anything, so no. Can we assume that they're adjacent to each other? Are they? Do they share a side? I C H. Where's I? I C H is adjacent to H C D. Yeah, they share the side C H. Yes. Can we assume that it's an angle bisector? B C is bisecting E C G. No, we can't assume. We can't assume that that they're dividing it into two equal parts. That's a no. All right, freeze it. See if you can pick which ones you can assume. I'm going to freeze my screen. You pick them on yours. Oh, did you see it says cannot be? I circled the one that can be. Which ones cannot be assumed? Oops.
Here's what I got. I got A and C both cannot be assumed. This last one, it says you can't assume that they're perpendicular, but that one's told to us that they are. They make a right angle. That one I can because it told me. So any questions? We'll get better at what we can assume and what we can't.